resin prints exploding, any cubic is apparently making desktop CNCs, and a Voron. That's been having a bad day. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 135. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. And if you're struggling with getting your 3D printers running right, we can help you. We've been doing this now for 135 weeks where we help people that are dealing with 3D printer problems get their printers back to printing with purpose. And if you are struggling with this, you can reach out to us, slide into those DMs on all the social medias, or email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. We can see here that the user printed these D&D minis over a year ago, and they've been sitting in a dark cupboard cured for at least six months. They both exploded. Didn't know that could happen. I knew they were hollow, but I didn't know they could do this. Made a mess in the mini box with all remaining liquid resin. That's bad news. I've got a few problems here. One, you don't have gloves on. Resin is toxic. Two, you're by a sink, which means you are probably rinsing the resin down the drain. Resin is toxic. It is toxic to the waterways. It is toxic to aquatic life. It is toxic, period. Resin is toxic. Please don't do this. I don't care if your resin says that it is water washable. That just means the resin can come off with water. That does not mean it is potable, which means it can go down the drain. Don't put resin down your drain, please. And while yes, I know that potable doesn't technically mean that it can go down your drain, potable really means more for drinking and using and cooking and all that, I believe. I promise you, 3D printing resin is not safe for any of that and in fact will cause chemical burns if left on your skin long enough. We can bring back that time where we showed it to you guys if you want. You don't want me to do that, I promise. Wear gloves, don't wash down the drain, and if your models are hollow for some reason, drill a drain hole in them. You can use a program like UV Tools that can help you actually find those pockets of liquid resin before you actually print your parts and be able to drill the holes digitally before it becomes a problem. We did a video on UV Tools. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. UV Tools updates like every single day, so they're always adding new stuff into it. So if you are resin printing and you're not using UV Tools, what the heck is wrong with you? Because it's a pretty awesome program. And it's free. Didn't realize we were showing off our AnyCubic CNCs. Oh man, that's a, that's a bummer. This is what happens when you run your printers unattended. We talk about this often, do not leave your printers unattended. And it is a common fact that a lot of people will do. And well, for machines like this, if you're not dead sure and you haven't been doing this for a while, don't run your machines unattended. So what happened here, Grant? Well, the user forgot to put their actual build plate back on and so when the printer homed it squished into the magnet and then just started carving through the magnet itself no there is no way to fix this the really only way to fix this is to scrape off that magnet and put a new one on and that is going to suck you might be better off financially to just replace the whole dang bed and get a new magnet but if you're feeling up for the challenge I would see if I could find some sort of solvent that would loosen up the glue on that. I'm not aware of any offhand. I'm sure they exist, and I'm sure that there'll be some down in the comments below where, you know, we have an awesome community of people. So go down there, leave a comment if you like, and, well, hey, if you do like, leave a like. That helps the channel grow and subscribe if you haven't as well. And for just a couple of bucks a month, if you do want to support the causes that we do here, you can join Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube channel members and be able to get extra perks like getting profiles when we do videos on things. If you're in the Discord of the $10 tier and higher, you get to see the videos before they get released, assuming there's no embargoes on them and stuff like that. But in this case, yeah, I would probably be looking at at least trying to replace the magnet. Like you're not going to make it worse. It's already broken beyond repair. So taking some time and saying, you know what? I'm not going to hurt it any more than it's already hurt. I'd like to learn something in this process. And if I realize it ain't for me to try to fix it myself, then I'm already okay with buying the new plate. So I would take this as a really awesome learning opportunity and see if you can get that magnet off. And if you can't just replace the whole build plate. It's not too bad. Next up, this actually comes from Nero3D. We saw it on his Twitter. It is from the Voron Discord. And it says, oh no, what have I done? So, um, 
this is what happens when you try to run lightweight components and you have really high belt tension. This entire x-axis buckled on this Voron and it is likely from too high belt tension in my opinion. And honestly, this is crazy impressive. So this is one of those lightweight 2020 replacements and yeah, with lightweight comes, well, overall weaker products at the end of the day. And yes, you could go through and look at generative designing it and all of that, but that's not what was done here to my knowledge. We've looked at really lightweight profiles like this. We actually looked at it at the Fabrico booth back at 3D Printopia 2023. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. And yeah, they're crazy, crazy lightweight, but you do have to be careful because you can easily bend them out of shape. And interestingly, the user went back and fitted the old beefy 2020, which gave them greater acceleration. They think that's weird. I actually agree with the person below them. It's not weird. The extra mass will cause it to resonate less, generally speaking, allowing you to run higher speeds without pissing it off too much. So in theory, it makes sense. I understand that a lot of the Voron guys like to just kit out their printers as much as possible, run them to the nines, and see, uh, you know, what kind of trouble they can get themselves into. But sometimes you fly too close to the sun, and uh, you get to learn, you know, somewhat of an expensive lesson. Thankfully, these aren't too bad, but they're not cheap either. And uh, kudos to the top comment here. This is not the correct way to do four axis printing. Next up, Lost in Tech tagged us on Twitter. Remember, you can do that too. Said, LOL at 3D Musketeers found some material for you. And I said, oh no, we literally covered an issue like this two weeks ago. We'll card to that one so you guys can take a look. But this one is a little bit different. They said, anyone know what these two wires peeking out are? And should I be worried? This user owns a Gen 1 Ender 3 that they bought used and have been using it, well for a while now and those two wires that is a glass bead thermistor and well your heater here is um also an indicator lamp nothing is actually tight your thermistor is pulled out and your heater is loose as well and since this is a gen 1 ender 3 and it's an older gen 1 ender 3 it doesn't have thermal runaway the risk of this thing catching fire is real especially if they leave this cover off where the machine is not able to keep the heat sink cool. The real problem that we have though is this is not an all metal hot end, which means the PTFE liner goes all the way into the heat block itself. When PTFE, the material that these Bowden tubes are made out of, gets too hot, it off gasses toxic chemicals that can hurt you and will certainly harm your animals, especially if you have birds. They're very, very delicate to uh, toxic fumes. Hence the canary in the mineshaft reference, which if you are now putting all that together is way more morbid than you thought it was. If the canary stopped making noise, it was time to get out of the mineshaft. I'm sorry, but it's a reality. But anyways, this printer is not in good shape and needs a fair bit of redo. We can thankfully see the screw for the thermistor is still there, so they gotta power the machine down, please. Put the glass bead in, put the wires down and then the screw kind of goes around the wires and the washer is what grabs the wires. Do not over tighten that. It will damage the actual hot in itself. But yeah, you can see the screw in the washer right there and how it's pulled out a little bit. That's where those wires are supposed to be. And we can see that this was actually over tightened and the wires themselves are actually damaged. That's not good. And well, there's something else to discuss here because apparently they've been running it like this for a while and they never knew that this was an issue. And there are a lot of people telling them to take the printer to a dumpster fire and buy a printer more geared towards your skill level and understanding of equipment, which is none. One, that is really rude. And toxicity is just not my thing in this community. And if you follow us on Twitter, you would know that. That is such a toxic comment. And see, instead of saying throw it out and buy another one contributing to landfill waste that's just not going to go anywhere this does not break down in a landfill we could look at this as a teachable moment and say here are the things that are wrong how can we solve it the first step here you're going to need to reflash your printer it is not safe until you reflash your printer that's step one step two go ahead and put this stuff back and you can see they pulled the heater cartridge out i'm 
hoping that the printer was powered down at that point. Then you will need to see how to reassemble a Mark 8 hot end. This is an MK8 hot end or Mark 8 hot end. They're very easy to reassemble. And in fact, if you're going to go through this effort, frankly, I would just replace it with an all metal variant. But being that this is a bone stock Gen 1 Ender 3 that is running the dangerous firmware, it might not be a bad idea to look at maybe just upgrading. I'm not saying to throw this printer out. The rails and all the hardware associated with it are great to get donated to local maker spaces, hacker spaces, or even high schools that maybe could utilize the parts to build something else. Do not bring them a functioning printer. Let them know it is destroyed and tell them, look, this is just for parts. Please only use it for parts. And I think that that would be more than appropriate in that scenario. But the problem is not everybody has that kind of money to just throw away on things. 3D printing is not a cheap hobby. And while, yes, used Ender 3s can probably be had for less than 50 bucks, if all you have is 100 bucks, you can't go buy a new printer that's much better than what this one is. I think this is a great learning experience. And as we talked about with the Anycubic CNC, the printer is already pretty messed up. We have an awesome learning opportunity to say, all right, I don't have the skills that I need to understand this machine. So let's obtain that skill set so that we can better work these machines in the future. I don't like the whole gatekeepy strategy of go buy a better printer because that doesn't solve the problem. They don't learn that way. If the printer just does all the work for you, you'll never have to do stuff like this. And while there is some value in never having to do stuff like this, I personally believe that training people on how to do these things is really valuable still. And I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments below. Do you think it is worth trying to fix a printer like this? Or do you say, screw it, throw it out and get another one? It's just like, I love to know the thoughts of all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can do so. Links are in the description. You all know where to find them. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. And next to that will be a random video that YouTube thinks you should click. I think you should click them both. I think you should leave a like, subscribe, and hey, leave a comment if you haven't. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Done.